say behind every great man is a good woman and behind every biochemical reaction there's an enzyme but sometimes this isn't true sometimes you're on your own they said I was the man with the answers I knew everything about glycogen storage disorders but I couldn't save my friend and I couldn't keep my wife I was given a simple task to research the causes and possible cures of GSDs but I was betrayed everything stolen away from me who am I you ask my name is Burke Steele leading research scientist in the world of disease and research and this as far as I can remember is my story I work in the National Multi-Million Dollar Research Facility. Everything I do is government funded. We provided all the equipment, living expenses are all taken care of, just to ensure we work comfortably. And so I thought we did. I know you're wondering why I put so much into glycogen storage disorders. But glycogen is a storage form of glucose. Basically, the battery we dip into for energy it's found in our kidneys, liver and muscles and during periods of fasting when our body needs that extra energy we take from it in a process called the glycogenesis. But just like life, not everything goes according to plan. GSDs are autosomal inherited defects and they are a result of enzyme deficiencies in the glycogenesis pathway. Like I said, Behind every biochemical reaction, there's an enzyme, but sometimes you're on your own. See this woman? She's my wife, the lovely Jessica Steele. She's been with me since the beginning, but I guess it's getting to be too long a time. She's been in charge of monitoring our three patients, or well, our three guinea pigs, Anila, who suffers type 1 GSD or von Kirk disease, Jamal, who suffers type 2 or Pompe disease, and Graham, that sly bastard, who suffers from type 4 or Anderson's disease. There are 11 distinct GSDs. The most common are types 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9 which accounts for 90% of the reported disease cases. They are all caused by enzyme deficiencies. Unfortunately, there are no known cures. Well, none are figured out as yet. But we try to make their lives as comfortable as possible with specific treatments and monitoring their lifestyles. Although no cure exists, the conditions are not terminal and you can still live a normal but mediated life, except for Graham. Type 4 or Anderson's disease is the only condition that is in fact fatal at childhood. However, he's been lucky. He's been lucky to have a late onset. Anila is our youngest patient. Type 1 disease, first discovered in 1962, is caused by glucose 6-phosphatase deficiency. Basically, her body is unable to break down glycogen, so alternative sources of energy are made using fatty acid and ketone bodies. In the usual process of glycogenolysis, glycogen is broken down to glucose 1-phosphate and then to glucose 6-phosphate. This is then converted to glucose by the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase. This process occurs in the liver and kidney exclusively. Anila, just like any other von Kirk patient, are small as a result of delayed puberty and always appears irritable with a persistent hunger. She's easily fatigued and constantly spends time in the infirmary because of her enlarged liver, occasional seizures and easily bruised body. In total, there are 22 symptoms, but her low blood sugar levels, which is characteristic of the disease, were excluded off the doctors. This was followed by a typical liver biopsy and lactic and uric acid blood tests. The test revealed positive for Van Kirk, 
where blood sugar levels are low and lactic, lipid and uric acid levels are high. My wife, Jessica, is in charge of monitoring her diet and ensuring she eats frequently, overnight. Sadly, feeding tubes are placed through the nose into the stomach to provide simple sugars or starch. And my job was to ensure she takes the medication to lower blood uric acid levels. Her life is not the most normal, but she's ambitious and hopeful. Hopeful that one day she will grow up to teach biochemistry and maybe help those like herself. Jamal is one of our other patients suffering from glycogen storage disease type 2. This is otherwise referred to as Pompe's disease caused by acid maltase deficiency. Pompe's disease is a prototypic lysosomal disease with a deficiency of the lysosomal enzyme alpha 1 4 glucosidase, also called acid maltase. This is required for the breakdown of glycogen in the lysosome. Three forms of the disease exist infertile, juvenile, and adult. In this case, however, Jamal suffers from the adult form, where Abnormally structured glycogen accumulates in most tissue. He regrettably suffers from cardiomyopathy, which is the deterioration of the heart muscles and muscular hypotonia, which is a steady decrease in muscle tone. I have determined that he suffers from pompous disease after genetically screening and monitoring the activity of alpha 1 4 glucosidase in his body. From this discovery, I decided to treat his muscular hypotonia by increasing his protein intake and giving him creatine supplements to increase the amount of energy available to his cells. As well, he was advised to strictly stay away from strenuous exercise, and this can prevent major episode of rhabdomyolysis, which is a breakdown of muscle fibers to myoglobin, which is released into the bloodstream. But unfortunately, I have not been able to develop a definite form of therapy to soothe him. His heart and muscles are still weakening. Eventually, he will end up into a bag of air and die. Finally, there was Graham, the devilishly handsome Lance Graham. His fate was sealed to a very morbid one because of type 4 or Anderson's disease. His terminal. His condition was rare and is characteristic in children, but his late onset, though puzzling, is normal of a less severe form I discovered. The disease in this case was caused by a deficiency in transglucosidase, which is normally present in all tissue. Transglucosidase is responsible for controlling the branching of glucose. In its absence, abnormal glycogen is produced with long outer branches and now has a low solubility. This abnormal glycogen accumulates in the body tissues, especially in the liver. Symptoms of his disease were observed since childhood and were the most severe in comparison to Anil and Jamal. He suffered a lot. He had a slow development and as a kid, he had a liver transplant due to severe hepatic cirrhosis followed by complete liver failure. His other symptoms include an enlarged liver and spleen, muscular atrophy, and reduced tendon reflexes. The suffering is severe, and though there is no cure, Jessica hmm, has always been able to help through diet therapy. I've been working hard, but the furthest of reach in saving him is a scientific exploration of utilizing a recombinant adenoviral vector to correct the genes, simply in other words. Use virus to inject the corrected genetic information as gene therapy. Yet, all is still strictly theoretical and I may be years away from saving him. Years I don't have. Lance. Jessica and I had always been friends from as far back as I can remember. 
He was my sole inspiration for delving into the research of glycogen storage disease. I wanted to cure my friend, to see him smile without pain one more time. When I was granted this timely opportunity, I seized the bull by its horns. I was finally given the time and resources to build upon this desire, but my work, my research, drew me in. Like a mutt to the light, I was enthralled by it. I found myself shying away from Jessica, even in all her beauty, my work, my most precious research. Her grip was firm upon me. Jessica seemed to find comfort in Lance. I mean, we had been friends for ages, haven't we? Lance was always positive despite his severe pain. He always seemed to smile with Jessica amidst his troubles. Me? I was buried neck deep in sleepless nights, coffee, and my sweet research. It was until that day, when I sat slouched behind my desk, that I heard a blood curdling scream. I rushed to Lance's aid. At his bedside stood Jessica. A horrified look painted on her face as Lance's body convulsed involuntarily. His eyes rolled back in their sockets as thin gasp of air left his lips. My body froze. My sanity was taken away from me. It was in that instant that I felt that virtue had left my soul. The room melted to a silent hush as his lungs failed. Jessica, not able to control her emotions anymore, melted from shock to sheer sorrow. And the sun disease had held onto Lance's life, silently plotting his fate from the beginning. When I tried to console Jessica, she shook me off, muttering through the tears about how it was my fault that he had died. It was then it hit me. Lance, Lance had replaced me in Jessica's life. My work had destroyed me as it had destroyed Lance. The next day, when I entered my lab, the tables were cleared, my files gone, my computers wiped clean. A note was gingerly attached to the desk in Jessica's handwriting. She had took everything and left. My life, my research, everything gone.